Have you taken up the spooky spot this morning? Good morning, nighttime. I'm sending Dawn on switch the flag detail this morning. <laughs> it almost feels nice out here. Almost. Almost. Not, it doesn't feel oppressive. Not like yesterday, day before. It's a little better. It's upside down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's trained. <laughs> Put up my jack-o'-lantern flag. I put the little black cat with the pumpkins over here. And I put the new have be happy at Halloween flag over here on the big post. Yeah, be happy this Halloween has a cute little black kitty on it. And a different pumpkin flag over here. And my witches broom feet trick-or-treat over in this direction I actually have one more to swap out by the front porch no mail no, mail. no packages okay let's see your flag thank you You're welcome. I'm gonna put it on charge this morning okay First on my agenda this afternoon is uh, Guardian Angel again. Yeah, it's that time of year Halloween stuff. Um, but I'm specifically looking for another piece of Halloween fabric. Something to drape over top of my Lego bins that are there in front of the hearth. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going for. Then when I get back, um, I'm going to drive with Dawn over to the landfill. Um, probably go to Mr. Ball's and look for eggs. Uh, just do a couple other chores around the house. It is nothing short of amazing now. <laughs> I just never, never seems normal that all these leaves are coming down. Even though we go through this every year, the driveway is just totally full again. Entry mode on. I had uh, climate set to on and 80. It is uh, busier here today. Hopefully everyone will be following the rules. Guardian Angel is really strict about not letting people in the store without a mask and covering their noses and make announcements and going up and talking to people if they're not doing the right thing. So. I feel pretty good about coming in this business and will continue to come here while they continue to uh, do everything they can to keep everybody safe. Going to go in Little Angel just to make sure they didn't put any new um, Legos on the shelf. I see they have their yearly great selection of Halloween books. That's awesome. There's a couple of new pieces today, but not a ton. These glasses are pretty sweet. Um, Still more turkey stuff than Halloween stuff. I love looking in the vintage area. Just always something cool. Look at that frame. Yeah. Well, from the sheer number of people in there today, that was pretty terrifying. And I think I wish I hadn't come today. And I will be more careful about going in there when there are that many cars in the parking lot again. Don and I are headed to the dump. Tux is sound asleep, and I'd like him to stay there out of trouble. 
I had gone five days without seeing the stray cat that he was fighting and then I saw it again yesterday. We took a break from setting the trap. We now have the trap, the humane trap set again. Uh, keeping Tuck safe has felt like a full-time job lately. So Don and I are on our way to the landfill yeah. and I wanted to drive with him because we do have a chance to talk a little different in yeah. the car than we do around the house. And sometimes we listen to interesting Tesla podcasts too, yeah. which I enjoy and I certainly don't get to do that at home. But mainly Don and I were just kind of going over the whole wear a mask, wear COVID stands sort of a thing. And I appreciate the comments and support. Uh, yesterday I was pretty fired up when I came out of Walmart I admit um, and then today I feel like I made a poor choice going to Guardian Angel on a Sunday afternoon um, maybe if I had gone at 4 or 4 30 right before they closed the after church crowd would have already been through that's traditionally a quieter time I think I went too early is really what the problem was but um, you know Don was saying that you know the governor recently relaxed some of our guidance on what we're supposed to do so uh, we're kind of at phase what he calls 2.5 safer at home so he didn't put us in phase three we weren't doing that great but there was a lot of pressure on him not to keep us at phase two the the gyms wanted to open at some level and the bars wanted to open at some level and they were willing to do lawsuits and a whole bunch of other stuff if he didn't meet them halfway. So I really feel for him in trying to make the safe, most appropriate decision for all of his constituents, the people that's businesses were hurting and the people whose health needs to be protected. Um, but it seems like now that we're at 2.5, oh, and they also opened the outdoor playgrounds to let kids back on the playground. Um, I guess technically Johnny could start going up to Taekwondo. They have a, they have published a 16 people on the mat at a time plan and some small subset of people coming to do Taekwondo in person. But Johnny said he's happy at home. I'm happy that he's happy at home. Um, but it seems like since we loosened things up, the amount that people are not in my feeling taking it um, carefully anymore has uh, increased tenfold. Um, the governor did not say, don't worry about it anymore. Go out there, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> he said, I'm going to loosen it up a little bit. And if you guys continue to wear your masks and do what you're asked to do and social distance when you're in, you know, avoid large groups, stay away from people when you're in businesses, that kind of thing. Um, you know, hopefully we can move to three, but he did not say I'm going to loosen it up to 2.5 and you guys just do go do whatever you want to do now. So I don't know. Um, it seems like the change in attitude. Don thinks it's a little bit, it's football season. The weather is really pleasant, uh, especially, uh, last evening and today, you know, we're getting, everybody's getting into that. I want to be outside fall sort of a mentality. And I don't know, I've seen a lot of pressure in the news about um, about um, people being fed up with virtual schooling. And I certainly understand yeah. folks that um, have to work for a living and have smaller children, how much of a hardship it must be for them. We are so lucky in our situation with Johnny. He's old enough to stay home by himself and, you know, Don being retired. Um, you know, there's always somebody at the house, uh, pretty much. So, it, it, it works for us. It's not a hardship. But I, I would say that I am looking for that news story that says the benefits that some families are receiving that their children are in virtual school. Because I, I think there's this assumption by the news media and the public school officials that uh, children being schooled virtually is automatically a negative. And I want to tell you that I don't think that that's the case at all. That I think that there are some families and some children that are absolutely benefiting from the virtual school. Um, so I, I think folks should at least consider that that could be the, the case for some set of families. Anyway, we'll see how things are going into this fall. Nobody wants it to get back worse over the winter or the flu to complicate COVID or any of these other possibilities the news talks about. 
I'd like to continue to see our trends go in the right direction. Um, if you're wondering, North Carolina is sort of holding steady at 30 people a day dying and about 900 people hospitalized and 6% positive testing. Although I will say that the county that we live in, you know, at 6% is an average. We are in one of the lesser, there's a couple of hot spots in the state and Wake County, the capital city, Raleigh is not one of them, thank goodness. Oh, so, um, you know, I really enjoy riding my unicycle and uh, numerous people have been commenting about where did I get it and uh, also even on my trip I was stopped the longest conversation I had at a supercharger was another Tesla driver who wanted to know about my unicycle so uh, look I think a unicycle is fun I enjoy it uh, it took me a couple hours to learn how to ride it um, you got to be careful um, I think it's very effective something for people with electric cars and uh, charging supercharger you know it just makes it easy I when I got it I never thought I'd be going to the mailbox or the mailbox uh, and get the newspaper every day but that, that's been a big plus anyway long story short um, because of the interest that's been expressed uh, I went on and signed up for an affiliate link and I think Marianne's put that in the um, in the um, video right I, I have taken the link you sent me and it'll be in the video description along with the other information we have out there if, if you've I know a lot of people watch on um, I know a lot of people that watch on their big TV like they Chromecast which is what we do or they watch on their phone might not see the video description or even know that we have useful information in there I think people on the browser of course that's like right in front of them unless they do full screen I tend not to watch full screen when I watch videos so I'm seeing that information um, but anyway um, I put the ewheels.com affiliate link for Don in the video description and um, it'll start going in daily tomorrow or with this video and also he has a um, M103 and what's the brand again? Gotway. Yeah, Gotway. Yeah, Don has two. The little one is the M103 and the Gotway. The one that fits pretty easily in the frunk isn't quite as heavy, wouldn't take up as much room if you go into a place of business and you know need to take it in there um, on it. So what's the big one? It's a King Song KS16. Uh, S sport. It's kind of like a touring unicycle, right? If you want real well, range, they, longer range, or well, both of these are on the bottom third uh, of the things. They um, they don't get much smaller than those, or less expensive, but they do get a lot more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, I think the M103. If you're just going to use it. And to facilitate your electric vehicle traveling or simple stuff, you're not going to go long, you're not going to use it for commuting, long distances, things like that. I think the M10 3 would be my choice, but you need to get the uh, optional trolley handle. I think the trolley handle was 60 bucks, was a little pricey, but that trolley handle doesn't come with it, so you have to bend over and pick it up. But if, you, if you're, uh, uh, it's not that heavy, especially the one I have, which is the, I think they call it the 62 volt uh, one. It's only got, um, I think it only has 480 watt hours instead of uh, like 600 watt hours. Uh, the battery is smaller, so it's lighter. And trust me, the, the small one that I have, the 62 volt is, more than adequate will go up any hill you could ever want well if it can go up our driveway hill yeah and <laughs> um uh it's got more than enough range i mean honestly uh i don't know what it's got 20 25 mile range or something like that maybe maybe it doesn't matter you're not going to ride it more than five or six miles in, in a day on your worst supercharging day ever you're just not going to do it so i i think the range is uh, not really that important. Uh, I just like it small, light enough, goes in and doesn't take up a lot of room in the front. And so that's what I like about the M10 3. The other one takes up way more room in the front. Here comes up something. 
And just a thank you again to anyone that has um, taken delivery using our referral code or put in our referral code at order time and is happily awaiting the delivery of their Tesla. Um, Don and I really do appreciate that. Um, he did use his uh, free supercharger miles and jewels uh, on his trip out to Missouri and back. So from an electricity supercharging standpoint, um, it didn't um, cost him anything to do that. Uh, and, and just wanted to say that we are happily watching the referrals um, in the app and uh, thank you so much. Don's worried about it being busy and I would say it's not the worst we've ever seen but yeah there's a couple of people here um, those guys are all waiting to go to the garbage area and Don wants to pull up over here at the yeah, recycle I area yeah. I did notice that there's a gentleman in the electronics area had we thought to bring the old scanner today we could have probably handed it to him yep. yeah it's pretty much a zoo here there's even been a couple people that have gotten stranded out on Old Stage Road and couldn't quite get into the landfill. Mr. Ball wasn't open, we weren't sure. Not too upsetting since uh, we still have four dozen eggs. So, um, you know, a lot of things going on this week. Um, I did not watch the Lucid Air reveal, but I have watched several people comment who I respect, and I have seen the videos and, and things of that nature. So, well, uh, we watch Kyle's video. Watch Kyle, and then uh, uh, Rob Mowers, and a couple other ones. Uh, but I guess what I was really trying to get at, I wonder how fast they're really going to be able to roll it out. I realize they've got these very aggressive dates, uh, like the. Um, end of next year the uh under um what sixty five thousand dollar one or something will be out um which you know it's going to be I, I think those are very aggressive targets especially at any kind of a volume uh meaning you know more than a few thousand and they, they in fact they're they made a big point in their video and and i think this is the they're doing it correctly that they're not going to worry about the numbers they're just going to make sure they deliver a great car and i think that's going to work for them uh but it's not going to make them a significant player uh i believe that the people who are going to buy lucid air especially these early ones that are 160 thousand plus dollars are people who been waiting for who probably had one or maybe second in their uh, Model S's and they're sort of looking for something a little different and they have the money uh, so they're gonna go on they're gonna buy a Lucid Air so I ex actually expect you're gonna see press reports about all the sales that Lucid's taken from Tesla well I, I would say that's true there's gonna, I think there are gonna be quite a few sales uh, of from people who are Tesla drivers could be moving to Lucid, but I think that that's a very niche market. Just like anybody who's gonna buy a hundred and sixty thousand dollar plus car is a very niche market. So uh, I just think that people are getting a little tired of the Model S styling, uh, you know. And Elon has not talked about any kind of significant facelift. In fact, he's downplayed it. So I think that's going to happen. So I think that's where the, the thing is. And so their early sales on the uh, Lucid Air, uh, especially the uh, expense one, are going to be good. And they're basically going to hand build them. They probably won't make any money on them. Uh, but um, I think they're probably going to focus in California. I really question how they're going to roll it out. Because remember, they, can, they don't have a dealer network either. Uh, and they didn't talk about the service in the dealer network um, and how fast they're going to ramp that. They talked about galleries or something, but that that's different. Um, the other thing I guess this week is, uh, which you know I I've had this feeling. This is one of the few things uh, I knew even before I knew anything about Elon Musk. I read a book uh, by James Rome, R O M E, or uh, Doctor James Rome. The hype about hydrogen 
I read that book probably in 2006 or 2007, a long, long time ago. And he explained why the hydrogen fuel cell for mobility uh, isn't going to work. And uh, after this week's announcement, some of the speculation is that basically Nikola had no technology whatsoever because they basically signed up to use GM's batteries or battery supplier GM's fuel cell uh, and so well wait a minute I thought you said you had a fuel cell and I thought you had great battery so they decided to go G GM's route so I think in the, um, they've got no technology but then somebody said oh well but they've got this great refueling strategy so maybe Nikola is going to do the refueling well you know, there was that refueling station that blew up hydrogen. Um, if you're going to make it from renewable sources, you're going to have to transport it. I mean, you're going to have to put it in a uh, tanker, a uh, pressurized vessel, and haul it there if it's going to be renewable. If you're going to make it on site, you're going to use one of those steam, uh, uh, natural gas reforming, reforming uh, from steam. And now, you know, that's no big that's no big thing but that cuts down on the um, logistics because uh, all you got to be is near a, a just like most solar farms and wind farms all you got to be is near a natural gas tap um, so that would do that so I can't imagine what it's going to be like when somebody tries to put a hydrogen refueling station in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina, I could just imagine what the planning department would think about that. I mean, if you wanted to put a, a DC fast charger in Fuquay, Verena, Electrify America, um, you know, I think you could go down there and get a permit pretty quick and get it put in. But, you know, that thing blew up in height, that hydrogen refueling station blew up in Norway. And, you know, I don't know if I was given a choice of living next door to an electric DC fast charger or living reasonably close to a hydrogen refueling station. I think I would um, think I'd take the DC fast charger if I wanted to do that. Now, I do understand that hydrogen, when it explodes, it goes up. I understand that, but still, most people don't like the thought of stuff exploding. And, uh, you know, hydrogen is one of those pernicious molecules, according to. Um, Elon Musk you know it just goes places where you don't really want it to go and goes through things that really ought not go through so I had Don drive us past Fuquay's public service center this is where all the town vehicles park and I guess get gassed up charged up service the garbage trucks and uh, other town vehicles and there is this one electric charging vehicle station here it was put in when they built the building. I'm looking on PlugShare and I don't see it. Don's looking on his version of PlugShare. We don't have great cell service right here at this spot. We're kind of on the south side of town. But um, I, I do not see it listed in PlugShare. Yeah, Don's going to go ahead and add it to PlugShare. So he's grabbing a picture and checking out just exactly what kind of a charger it is. Don dropped me off over here by the boardwalk and he's going to back the GMC in. He's going to uh, wash Ruby now. That's why he had on his work clothes. His anti-mosquito, I can spray bug spray on myself clothes. Hey, Tuxie. Hey, sweetheart. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hello. So Johnny's learning how to make hard-boiled eggs by himself for the first time, an art project for school. Hey there. Hey, pretty cool. You making Ruby look all pretty for me? Yeah, trying to. Thank you. I got the driveway blown. Good girl. Thank you. There were a lot of leaves. Wow, that's geese. <laughs> Goodness. Well, that will be a sound to fall here in a couple of weeks for sure. Geese on migration. Looks like it's starting. Tux and I are close and we're getting a little misted. <laughs> Felt good to me. How'd it go? Um, well. <laughs> I think it went great. I think you did a good job. You learned, right? Yeah, I think so. A valuable learning experience. And they look 
like Mr. Don and I are really going to enjoy them. So good job. I've already eaten two of them. They taste just like when I make them. Uh, Johnny did a good job. Um, he had learned some stuff about the food processor. I just finished uh, sauteing a Boston butt, put in some um, really good jelly gravy from a previous piece of meat, some stock that I had from before, and I'm uh, going to let the Instant Pot do the rest. I do love it when my boy is asleep on the bench or anywhere else out the back uh, glass area that I can see. Don's probably just about done with Ruby. I hate it that I wasn't able to come out and help him wipe down the door frames. Woo, that car looks good. Woo, that car looks good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Nice. That girl cleans up nice. Wow, thank you. I just got the dinner started in the Instant Pot. So I regret I wasn't able to come out here and help. Don's pretty happy as long as I'm cooking. <laughs> I don't know, the red just looks really good in particular to me right now. I don't know what year, but the boys were little and I was living at the other house, so it's pre-2011. Um, I bought on e eBay kit 1382 and it's basically a Frankenstein laboratory and I got it for Halloween. And um, one day I wasn't paying attention to what the boys were doing. And let's just say they might have had fun taking it apart. So I figured this Halloween, it's time to put it back together. I have it um, 95, probably 98% back together. I need to hunt down a spire for up here that's missing. Um, and there are a couple of these tall pieces like this on the back side that are missing. And um, I wasn't able to build this one tiny, I don't know, unit here. Uh, but I, and this this uh, scorpion is missing. But really, everything else is here. I mean, if I didn't tell you it was missing anything, you would just think it was all here. Um, I'm really happy I was able to put it back together in I guess around an hour, something like that. I uh, will work on the final touches or maybe spooking it up a little bit or doing something tomorrow. But I'm I'm pretty darn happy with it as it stands. I uh, am pleased it wasn't too hard to get back together. There's quite a few things on it that move. Like if you sit somebody in here, you can dump them off. This uh, spins, you can see the little disc spins there. Frankenstein will actually go up and down on the little teeter-totter here. Um, the three pieces that make up the building are just connected by this little walkway ray gun. Um... So I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. So this was a studio kit, like I said, and it's basically the little film guy is over here and maybe the little studio producer. And um, so it's a spooky set and they're supposed to be filming a movie. I think it's pretty cool. I'm excited about it. I'm glad it's back together and it's glory. One last feature when you spin the guy on top, the little... Uh, skeleton appears and disappears. I suppose I have extra minifigures. I could put one on both sides. The meat. The gravy. And I had a little bit of extra broth that was under the meat that I used in the gravy, but I just had too much of it. Yeah, Don's been checking out uh, the NFL kickoff Sunday football, and this definitely looks like a fall football meal.